talk about Bud after too, right? Oh, of course. The the, the non-use of the timeouts. Oh, Coach Bug, my favorite. This <laughs> Nothing makes me feel like 2019 more like Mike Boonholzer, man. Let's go, let's go, let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, oh. Bud, Bud at the end of regulation. You know, there's only like 0.5 seconds left on the clock, but like you, you got to use a timeout there. Okay, friend right. of the program, Asad yeah. Alvi, who mm. does the slander pods. I know a lot of people last night were hitting him up, be like, slander pod? I'm like, yo, relax. It's 1 a.m. I need to sleep. <laughs> this is not the Raptors. But I appreciate it, right? So Asad actually went through the video and pointed this out. Um, so you know how uh, coaches, usually at the end of the games, they'll stand like near the scores table rather than sitting on the coach's bench, right? So he's actually quite separated from the assistants. Now, assistants can run over and walk over or whatever. But after the shock of the fact that the Bucks, first off, they got tons of very friendly calls in the fourth quarter that that alone might have gotten them over the edge. They got some very friendly calls, okay? So they're up two, and they have to defend uh, for, I think, two seconds. And, you know, Jimmy Butler obviously makes that play. It's a pretty standard play. But I think what was clever about what the read that Jimmy made was that he was the biggest player in that scenario. So what, what you had was... The Heat had somebody in the backcourt. I think they put Duncan Robinson in the backcourt. That's the funniest decoy of all time. <laughs> what were they going to do inbounding the Duncan Robinson 70 feet from the hoop, right? They had Kyle Aria half court. They had somebody else, I think, on the – on. actually, no, those are only two guys on the floor in terms of not involved in the inbound or the actual play itself. And the play itself was actually just – I think Struess set a back screen for Jimmy Butler around, like, the paint. And it sort of just curled off of each other, right? So there's four players in there, two offensive, two defensive. The two players for the Bucks were uh, Connaughton and Holiday, and obviously there's Struess and, and Jimmy Butler there. The, the genius of that play, usually if you throw lobs to centers, Jimmy is the center in that scenario. Who else can actually catch the pass the way Jimmy can in that scenario? And I thought the Bucks actually did a decent job of staying connected to him and, and still like relatively affecting the shot. But again, that's where size truly matters in that scenario, right? He's essentially a center in that specific play, um, I think, obviously, if you were a bud, maybe you think back on it. It's like, okay, maybe I put a, a center near the basket to take away the option for the lob because he did take Brooke Lopez out of the game. But I wouldn't even blame him. Just a great play design by the Miami Heat, why they want to say it was Spo or it was Jimmy Butler. However, when there's 0 0.5 seconds left still, you could see that one of the assistants was actually running over from the Bucks, being like, bud, you have a timeout. You have a time," And bud's just standing there. He is just standing there watching their team inbound the ball and not get a shot off, which, like, whatever. 0 0.5 seconds left, you're probably not going to score much. But you know who also made a shot with 0 0.5 seconds left? OG Ananobi. You can get a, you can at least get a sequence off. You can at least run a play, and your coach is literally just standing there frozen. Mm -hmm. your, his assistants are having to sprint over the distance of, like, those four or five, like, courtside seats, being like, hey, sir, do your job. So they didn't know that. That's already such an egregious mistake. Like, so egregious. And then you fast forward to overtime, whatever. Like, a whole bunch of Miami Heat players foul out. Like, Bands out of the game. Like, Kyle's out of the game. Like, they're, like they finished the play. You know who made the final contest on Grayson Allen? It was uh, Haywood Highsmith. Oh, my guy. You know what I mean? This guy sounds like an Indy 88, like, <laughs> like artist. Like, it's, it's wild who they have on the floor. Cody Zeller's on the floor for them. And in that sequence, Miami's still able to take the lead. But obviously, it's a one-possession game. And... Again, there's 10 seconds left in a two-point game. And sure, you might say, like, okay, maybe you run up and see if there's a transition advantage. First off, when is there ever a transition advantage on the last play of the game in that kind of sequence? Obviously, Miami was back. Second of all, once you see there is no transition advantage, you need to then take the timeout, right? And whatever, Giannis had the ball. He's dribbling it against the guy. Maybe you kind of liked it for a second. As soon as he turned his back, you take the timeout. When he made the pass, I don't even know who he passed it to. It was to Middleton, and Middleton then it swung to Grayson Allen. didn't have an advantage. You take the timeout. Mm -hmm. like, and the whole time, he didn't do anything to the point where Grayson Allen ended up with the ball last second. Euro steps into a shot clock violation. <laughs> Yo, the clock just ended in the middle of his move. Is that the worst coaching performance you've ever seen, though? Like, Yeah, and this is the most embarrassing ending to a, to a playoff series. I actually challenge anyone like listening or watching to like submit other other playoff series endings. Like... Like you mentioned, at any time during that possession within, the, within those 10 seconds, like even towards the end with like three seconds left, he could have just called a timeout. Yeah. Like even when the ball was in Grayson Allen's hands, I think at that point, you've got to recognize that the play is already broken down. Yes. You know, you don't yes. want that. That's not the guy that you want, you know, to have the ball in that situation mm -hmm. at the at the top of the key. And like Bud was asked about it afterwards. And like, 
like he he seemed to just like realize afterwards that he should have called timeout at the end of regulation. Yo, the wildest thing is even when you listen to the NBA TV broadcast, first off, that has to be the best NBA TV game ever. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Adam Silver messed up again yesterday. Man. How we got four Adam games Silver, yesterday and one line, game man. today, man. Holy. Um, I'm, I'm unsubscribing from Disney Plus when he joins. Even the play-by-play -play announcer, as the sequence was happening at the mm -hmm. end of regulation, was like, why did they take time out? What? Because you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's roles, right? Mm -hmm. The play-by-play -play is going to describe what's happening, and then the color commentator comes in and gives you the analysis, right? The play-by-play -play guy was even like, wait, <laughs> the script is not happening. No, what are you doing? We've seen every other coach, a high school coach yeah. in this scenario should be fired for, for making that mistake. No, no, no. Like, I, it makes me think back to, to remember the Raptors-Celtics game earlier this season when I think Gary had the ball late yep. in the game and then Nick, like, called a timeout, I think, yes. when they had an advantage, right? That was a four-on-two fast break. Yeah, so, like, situations like that, but times 100 because your team is facing elimination yes. in the first round yes. and you just, you made a mistake both in regulation and you had a chance to correct that yes. in overtime. And like the, the kind of lowest bar for a head coach in the playoffs is to just manage the game. Like forget about yeah, the X's yeah. and O's, you know, all of that stuff, like drawing plays out of timeouts. Like you have to just manage the game and put your players in a position at the end of games, right? Mm -hmm. Cause the players out there and that's the onus is just purely on the head coach. And for bud to mess it up twice. It's like, actually, I, uh... I actually don't think, I don't think how he can come back from this.